Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I'm glad to be here together today with you online. Hopefully, uh, students will be ret return returning while, while we start uh, because they are the most important part of my audience this today. Uh, although I'm very glad that a number of people from, from back home, from Montenegro, has told me that um, they will be also listening to these troubling and unfortunate stories related to our country. You have seen the movie which I uh, found uh, interesting, uh, people who are to listen about some aspects of the uh, uh, relationship between uh, religion or so-called religion and politics in our country. I thought it could be useful for them, whether they are informed or half informed or completely uninformed what it is all about, to see this uh, disturbing, actually, documentary where, if I have a number of us have listened to that directly in all these years, uh, turbulent, tragic, uh, dramatic years of uh, last years of ex Yugoslavia, the civil war, the, the tragedy, the, the crimes, uh, war crimes, genocide, and and everything which has actually uh, succeeded after that. Because uh, any kind of introduction related to the activity and the motivations and the uh, the very goals of the Serbian Church in Montenegro. Uh, uh, all these stories sound exaggerated, sound uh, some kind of simplification, some kind of ideologized or politically motivated interpretation of the role of the role of certain religious group or church in certain country. In this uh, uh, case, Montenegro when you see that without any preparation, without any documentary, without any proofs, without any reading about the, uh, what it is all about. And, and uh, I'm glad that uh, despite the technical issues and problems, uh, the documentary was seen uh, hopefully by a number of, of your students and they can get more clear uh, picture. What is the phenomenon? What is the problem we are faced with and what is the, the Actually, the reason why I have uh, gladly accepted your invitation to to, to say um, a couple of words about uh, that particular phenomena, plural, plural in our country, uh, related to to the so-called religious activities. So uh, uh, before before actually uh, starting this online meeting, I was uh, as the outgoing uh, Montenegrin ambassador to the Holy See and to the Sovereign Military Order of Malta here in Rome, uh, given the changes in our government, I was uh, among the first on the list of our diplomats to be replaced, to be revoked, and after certain issues which were related dominantly to, to constitutional or interpretation of our constitution and the laws regulating the status and, and, and the activity of uh, our ambassadors and our diplomats abroad, uh, my term expired after the certain decision, as it was required by constitution, certain decree of our president uh, on, on February 26th this year. And I'm, uh, from that moment on, still here in Rome, uh, having the farewell visits with the dignitaries, both in the Holy See and in the Order of Malta. But today I also had a very interesting and very pleasant meeting with my friends, with our friends from community of Sant'Egidio, which is the um, religiously uh, based and religiously motivated a group of people uh, organized, if I'm not mistaken, 1968, and they are very much pol they are politically active, very much. And maybe some of you remember that some of you remembers that uh, at the end of uh, by the end of the NATO intervention in in in, in that was called then Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, Santa Gidio, the community of Santa Gidio was uh, 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 directly involved in in in, in negotiations how to reach peace, that is how to make a truce, how to, to end the military operation, which was, of course, provoked by the activities of Serbian uh, uh, military and, and, and Serbian government in, in then province of Kosovo, a very tragic event where uh, our, our friends from Santa Gidio has have shown in a very efficient and in very positive way how one can be both religiously uh, uh, organized or religiously motivated and politically active in the same time and to be positive and to have some 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 positive and correct results what we have just seen in this documentary 
actually shows the unfortunate Montenegrin case where the uh, the activity and the role and involvement of Serbian church or the, Serbi or the faction of the Serbian church, Orthodox church in Montenegro, to what extent they are deeply involved in politics. And it is uh, one of the, the, the main problems and main issues which remain unresolved in Montenegrin society, both in cultural but also political terms as we speak. Very briefly, because I would, I wanted maybe to, 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 to offer a, a couple of points which could be interesting for the our conversation afterwards for the Q and A, which I like the most. Uh, I think it, it's most interesting also for, for the public, for the listeners, and to me as a some kind of lecturer or presenter of these ideas to maybe to have a, a direct dialogue and to to answer your potential questions and to hear to to your comments or interpretations on your side. So very briefly, traditionally Montenegro is oppressed from uh, from the years uh, actually succeeding the, the World War I uh, with the problem uh, which was uh, very dramatic, which was tragic in a number of its aspects, where Montenegro as a country was eliminated, was uh, uh, completely swept off the map. Montenegro, which was an ally uh, during the First World War, we were on the winning side. Unfortunately and tragically enough, after the war in Versailles Conference and with the consequent occupation of our country by Serbian military, by Serbian troops, Montenegro has lost its independence, has lost its statehood, even the name of Montenegro was eliminated. And on top of that, and that is one of the segments of our troubled reality these days, Montenegro Church, Montenegro independent autocephalous Orthodox Church was brutally eliminated in a way which has nothing to do with the canonic law, with the procedures, with a, with a, in a manner which uh, is actually completely irregular and illegal. And it has remained as such until these days. In our country, one of the main issues related to that tragic history of our church is actually uh, um, lies, in the fact, lies in the fact that we have never learned a word in our schools, throughout our education in our country, a word about those events. So that is a history where, which is relatively easy to be, to be shown, to be proven. The documents are still available. It is something which has happened less than 100 years ago, or 100 years ago exactly, because last year we have actually commemorated uh, the 100th uh, uh, anniversary of the elimination of Montenegrin Orthodox Church. The problem is that the number of Montenegrin citizens, numbers, number of Montenegrins are not aware what was our uh, uh, part of our history and our reality, rela reality 100 years ago in the context of our church. Uh, in 1920, by the decision of then uh, Regent Alexander Karadzorjevic, future king, who was, as we all know, assassinated afterwards in Marseille, France, and with the signature, if you believe, of a deputy minister for religion in Belgrade, uh, Montenegrin Orthodox Church, autocephalous one, as it was written there, was assumed, was uh, uh, accumulated, was actually uh, uh, involved in, in the newly created Serbian Orthodox Church. And from that moment on, there is a narrative, there is the official history, which does not mention, does not allow to be Montenegrin Orthodox Church to be mentioned, and it expands to these days. As you well know, uh, uh, Mont Montenegro has, uh, we have, um, and I was very pleased and I'm honored and I'm actually very proud that I was uh, foreign minister in the period when uh, we have regained our independence through a peaceful democratic way in, in, a, in a very specific referendum with a, with a requirement of this uh, enhanced additional majority needed the referendum to be, referendum itself to be uh, a, a considered uh, legal and, and valid and legitimate. And we have managed to have 55.5% of majority in favor of regaining independence. We have done that in a peaceful, as I said, democratic way, which was respected by international community, which Volens Nolens was also respected by the forces in Montenegro, which were uh, against or very much against uh, uh, the very idea of our independence on one side and by our friends and neighbors in Serbia who, of course, we are not delighted by the outcome, by the result, but nevertheless, they, given the, the, the very strong and correct position of the international community, Washington, Brussels, Moscow, were actually um, 
politely asked to recognize us, which which they have done. In a way, I still I still have back home I, a, a a document of recognition of Serbia towards Montenegro for um, recognition of, Ser of Serbia uh, uh, related to Montenegro independence, although it is not written uh, in a way which we lawyers would say lege artis or in a, in a, in a manner which is uh, usual in diplomatic terms, uh, nevertheless, they can recognize us. One of the problems which at the time were not uh, actually was considered after the independence was regained, Montenegro has become the member of the United Nations and other international institutions and organizations. Uh, uh, one of the issues uh, it was considered a premature to be dealt with was the issue of our church, the problem of the existence of a, a faction or section or part of Serbian church organization of Serbian church in Montenegro. Because, you know, in Orthodox, in Orthodox world, with very few exceptions uh, related and I should be very, how to say, blunt here, open here, although these are the facts, not my opinion, but a reality. They are with the exception of um, certain issues related to Russian church on one side and Serbia church on the other. There is the uh, a rule saying uh, one nation, one church, where the even territorial, territorial authority of, of national churches actually coincide and they are actually uh, uh, the boundaries, the borders, of that particular nation. And there are a few exceptions. One of them is Montenegro. And of course, uh, the Montenegrin government, after referendum, has tried in different ways to tackle the issue, knowing that most of our political problems, most of our problems related to our integrity of our country, to identity of our people, to a political orientation of the country, and that segment of citizens, which are related in different ways, being the believers, uh, being religious themselves uh, to, to to the corpus of, of of the part of our society which is of orthodox descent, uh, uh, the government considered that uh, rightly enough a very complex issue, and but nevertheless there were a number of different in, in, different initiatives, different proposals, different attempts to de deal with that issue in uh, in a way which would uh, actually try to. Uh, uh, to have something uh, which in, in Latin law would be called restitutio in integrum, meaning to actually recreate, reconstitute the normal normal existence of Orthodox Church in Montenegro with a proper name, Montenegrin Orthodox Church, as it was the case until 1920. Uh, and, I, and I repeat, for I'm not a historian, I'm not an expert for these particular issues, but nevertheless, even us ordinary citizens, even the foreigners, can easily detect and understand what it is all about because uh, uh, most of the documents, a number of them are still available. They are not that old. They are something like 100, 200 years old. They are still available in, in different libraries, not only in Montenegro and in Serbia, but also abroad, including here in the archives of the Holy See, where we have done certain things, positive and nice things, in the last three and a half years during my term. So uh, after referendum, Montenegrin government, uh, the, the political leadership has tried to do it different ways to resolve the issue, uh, even proposing an interim uh, a name for the for the uh, Orthodox or Christian uh, part uh, uh, corpus in our society and the church itself as an interim solution. Uh, uh, they have, uh, and I recall it was, if I'm not mistaken, 2015. Uh, 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 then uh, Prime Minister Jukanovic has proposed to rename the church uh, uh, and not to call it Serbian or, or Montenegrin, but uh, we to have uh, a, a temporary solution to call it Orthodox Church in Montenegro. Needless to say, it was immediately and very violently, bluntly uh, refused by the authorities in Belgrade, by the authorities of Serbian Orthodox Church. And after that, there was an attempt uh, which is probably uh, uh, more uh, adjusted to the nature of the problem of the church in our country, uh, and, uh, and that is the law on religious uh, uh, freedom and religious communities. Uh, there were two attempts. The Montenegrin government has tried first to, to, to launch a first draft law, uh, 20, 2014 to 2015, with a very violent response 
of then leadership of the Serb of Metropolitan of, of Cetinje, Mr. Amfilohi Radović. Unfortunately, he has died recently because of COVID. And uh, uh, there was no, uh, uh, how to say, conditions. Uh, uh, the situation was not prepared enough to have so that kind of that kind of uh, solution. Uh, uh, in the same time, Serbian Orthodox Church has bluntly refused, even in a very direct and very aggressive way, refused to to take any part in negotiations or any part of in talks about the possible legal solutions in that uh, law draft. After that, there was another another uh, another attempt, which was much more, I would say, fruitful, which was more serious, uh, better prepared. Nevertheless, uh, 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 Serbian Church uh, was not ready to to engage. Serbian Church in Montenegro, that is, of course, supported by the by their headquarters in Belgrade. They were not ready to engage, and the Montenegrin government has actually uh, drafted the law, which was consequently uh, uh, examined. And, and and thoroughly analyzed in Venice Commission. And uh, 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 let me end that part of, of introductory note, although I think I'm still, I'm already uh, talking a bit more than I thought. I will dedicate uh, 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 my time to, and your time to this, this part of the problem. So long story short, there was a Venice Commission uh, uh, by the end of 19, uh, 2019. Uh, 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 I was there as ambassador to the policy. I want you to listen to that directly and to learn what it is all about, what is the position of the colleagues from the Venice Commission. Needless to say, there are 47 countries I represented there. They are actually the Council of Europe, that is the Council of Europe body, uh, expert body, uh, constitutional lawyers, lawyers of uh, all other uh, types who are actually on behalf of their countries analyzing uh, uh, the, law, the, the, the legal issues and legal problems and the drafts, uh, law drafts from, from different countries. And uh, after the, 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 the very detailed uh, uh, examination and discussion about the provisions of that law, uh, it was adopted by Venice Commission with one vote against. Uh, 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 it is not surprised that a representative of Serbia was against. It was, of course, a peculiar element that that very representative was a Montenegrin by origin. He was a deputy, if I'm not mistaken, at the time. The gentleman was a deputy uh, justice minister of Serbia. And uh, 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 it was very uh, nice and sympathetic that we had a one vote abstained. A gentleman from Banja Luka, from Bosnia-Herzegovina, from Banja Luka, an ethnic Serb, said, and I quote, I do not agree, I don't like this law, I do not agree, do not agree with it, but I like Montenegro and I cannot vote against Montenegro, so I will, I, I, I will abstain. So the law was actually overwhelmingly supported by the Venice Commission, confirmed as a, as, as a legal draft, as a legal uh, 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 regulation, which is correct, which is uh, in total accordance with the, in, in absolute accordance with the all, all the principles of, and values which are shared by, by uh, European uh, by Europe, by the Helsinki Act, and afterwards. So, so uh, actually, which uh, the law was, uh, needless to say, uh, accepted by all other religious communities and churches in Montenegro, the Islamic community, the Catholic Church, the Montenegrin Orthodox Church, and it had an approval by the Venice Commission with, I repeat, one vote uh, uh, against and one vote abstained. And, and, and let me remind you that among other countries, there are uh, Orthodox countries or predominantly Orthodox countries. Uh, there are representatives there, like Russia, like Bulgaria, Romania, Greece, Cyprus, Northern Macedonia. And they all have actually voted in favor of the provisions they were drafted in our law. The law was passed in Montenegro by the end of 2018. And then we had the second phase, the, the, the reappearance uh, of aggressive uh, uh, presence and aggressive activity of the Serbian Orthodox Church in our political life. They have started supported by the uh, parties which are commonly known or even self-defined, auto-defined as pro-Serbian parties in our country. They organized a serious serial of, of, of protests or processions uh, where they have requested the law to be abolished, that the law is anti-Serbian project, that the provisions of the law are against the Serbian church in our country, that the government of Montenegro, uh, the state of Montenegro would like to rob 
the property of the Serbian church and so on and so forth. Needless to say that, of course, uh, according to our tradition, the legal tradition, which is absolutely undisputable, which can be easily proven until 1918, before the assumption of the or integration uh, the, the forceful, uh, dramatic, violent integration of Mont Montenegrin church into the uh, Serbian church, all the uh, church property in our country, all the all the churches, all the monasteries were under state property. And it is clearly written there. The provision of the law, which was very problematic for Serbian church in Montenegro, and which was supported by the parties which are uh, inclined towards Serbian nationalism or the interests of Serbian of uh, Serbia as a country and, and Serbdom, as they call that very cultural and political phenomenon, which encompasses all Serbs. Uh, 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 they have insisted uh, the law to be abolished, and uh, uh, that was actually a very specific and very dramatic election campaign, in which, uh, given some other issues in our country, which should not be and cannot be denied, the problems like corruption, the problems of certain exhaustion of, of, of the government of parties which were in power for 30 years, and a and, and, and number of other uh, issues related to that, we had a, a um, an outcome of, 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 of regular uh, uh, parliamentary elections in, in, in uh, August 30th last year, which has actually created a new majority in our parliament, a parliament which is, uh, given the fact that Montenegro is a small country, is a relatively small one, 81 members of the parliament are there. And in this very moment, we have 41 uh, 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 member, members of the parliament, they, they create the ruling coalition and 40 uh, uh, are in opposition. Uh, the last point here before we go to questions and answers, although I have five or six now, I see other points which were useful to be mentioned, but I don't believe that we have enough time there. Uh, um, we have a government which is in a sheer contrast, in a sharp contrast, in an absolute negation of Montenegrin overall and political tradition. We have a uh, a government which is uh, uh, exclusively pro-Serbian government, created by people who define themselves as Serbs, with one exception. There is always one exception. A deputy prime minister, Mr. Um, Dritan Abazovic, is uh, um, alleged. Well, he is an uh, ethnic Albanian uh, and Muslim by 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 descent, by religion. Uh, with that particular exception, we have we have a monotheistic, we could say like that, uh, 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 and more ethnical government, which is absolutely nothing to do with Montenegrin tradition, which was even respected even the worst years of our recent history during the years when Serbian Orthodox Church were promoting these kind of aggressive nationalistic, xenophobic ideas, as you have seen and listened to in that movie. So uh, uh, we have the situation in which. Uh, the entire Montenegrin opposition, Montenegrin in the terms of all citizens, of all ethnic groups, all religion, uh, uh, religions represented and present in Montenegro, they are now in opposition. The government does not have any ally of any ethnic party, of any minority party. So we don't have, they are the parties of, for example, uh, 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 ethnic Croats, Catholics. We don't have any single party of ethnic Albanians, Catholics, of ethnic Albanians, Muslim. We don't have any Muslim party there, or Bosnia party is not represented. And on the top of that, we don't have Montenegrins being involved in Montenegrin politics in the terms of our government as we speak. So uh, Montenegrin case, to let me end like uh, in, in this way, uh, and I do apologize that maybe I have um, not structured my presentation in a way which I thought could be more interesting for you before, but we don't have time. So we are now in a very peculiar situation that we have a government which is under direct influence by the Serbian church in Montenegro and from Serbia. The influence is nothing, not a secret. It's not anything where uh, the participants directly involved uh, pretend that they are not communicating with the church. On the contrary, they are using their communication and cooperation with the church, and they are actually fighting and competing who is in better terms with uh, with uh, 
with priests of Serbian Orthodox Church in order to promote their political ideas. So we have a quite a disturbing and negative example uh, 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 in nowadays Montenegro, in present Montenegro, in contemporary Montenegro, where we are back actually in terms of in terms of, of political uh, situation and overall atmosphere in the in the years of unfortunately and tragically enough of early 90s last century when uh, the, the tragic and, and criminal war in ex Yugoslavia was prepared uh, not in the same place Montenegro was not the center of that destructive destructive endeavor and that is that was happening in Bulgaria predominantly but the participants are the same on one side you have politicized highly politicized and aggressive orthodox Serbian Orthodox Church and on the other side as their political partners followers and sometimes even puppets if I may use the word you have politicians which uh, uh, they are self-described they are auto, auto described as as nationalists as people who as their uh, as their uh, clerical uh, counterparts consider Mr. Milosevic as you have heard Mr. Mladic Mr. Karadzic and other war criminals as heroes and that is a dangerous situation in, in a multi-ethnic and multi-religious country with some atheists if I may mention a group I belong to uh, uh, in Montenegro and, and that is something which I do hope that Montenegro will have enough wisdom strength uh, uh, enough uh, uh, I would say decisiveness to overcome even this uh, dramatic challenge to to our country to our nation in, in in the meaning all of us living in Montenegro for the very end you will allow me one thing as the as the, as the former ambassador to the Holy See and to the uh, military sovereign order of Malta you know with my with my counterparts here with my hosts with the people I have communicated and worked with in the last three and a half years I was advised when I met when I met his holiness Pope Francis for the first time I was strongly advised not to tell him that I'm an atheist but I did uh, I, I, I did tell him that because I thought it's my actually it was my desire to to present myself and to, to say that among other things being a liberal democrat being a lawyer being a father being being a Montenegrin I'm also a, an absolute atheist and his answer was beautiful he, he said no 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 I don't mind I said um, so if I I know that you would not I knew that you would not mind but uh, the reason why I said that was not to to only to say okay there are some athletes in this world who respect people who are true believers who are who understand religion as the as the human platform for doing good towards the other people that is what religion should be all about but uh, to express my 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 sincere and and and, and basic belief uh, which uh, more or less says in a slightly shortened and simplified way that we do not differ amongst ourselves in this world on the basis of that very situation whether we believe or not whether whether we are religious or not that is a difference that is an interesting point of potential discussion but the main difference is not related to the fact whether he or she believes or does not believe in God the main issue in this world and it is always the case and it is the case now in Montenegro and it was the case in the Balkans in ex Yugoslavia even in the years uh, uh, to which the, the, the very documentary uh, is related to what are the values we believe in what are the values we are ready to defend to fight for what are the values we would like the others to respect that is the main difference not the very fact whether we believe or not believe whether we are closer or less close to certain church and that is and I end with that that is my principle principle a, 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 a distancing remark on the activity of the Serbian church in Montenegro not only they negate the existence historic vertical of autocephalus autocephalus autonomous Montenegrin Orthodox Church not only they deny 
Not only they deny the existence of Montenegrins as an ethnic group, as a nation, not only they deny the value and, uh, and the possibility and historic uh, tradition of living together in a multi-ethnic and multi-religious society, as is the best part of our tradition in Montenegro, they also deny the very idea they officially defend, and that is the idea of good. They have uh, 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 sided with evil, if you allow me to use the, 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 the vocabulary they are more inclined to. And it is clearly shown in this documentary, and thank you very much for observing it, because it, it provides a very direct uh, introspective into, into the, the, the most troubling part of Montenegrin culture and political life in the last uh, three decades. Thank you.